if anyone listens to this, you just need to trust me. This kid, Ollie Lawrence, has the ability to, to, to do it all. He is the real deal. Because Brendan, just in terms of, he said that playing a European Cup game is like a Premiership game every week. So playing a Premiership game week in, week out is literally like playing a European Cup game every single week, which... And we we seen there yesterday how great some of the European game was. It's re- it must be really hard just to keep up with that kind of phys- the physicality in it, and you must need to obviously have a have a big squad. It's nice to hear Macken say that because sometimes you are over here thinking you're living in in Cuckoo Land where uh, oh the Premiership's harder and whatever this, but it's nice to hear other people say that. I think um, you do need bigger squads. Bigger squads means bigger budgets, um, which is definitely the case. And I, I know that people can feel it's it's unfair that they have bigger budgets over here and whatever. The salary cap's obviously an area for contention too, but I do think like the physicality of going week to week in the Premiership has to have an influence on why the English teams cannot produce what they need to in Europe but it, who knows what the answer is who knows because the reality is the Irish are are the, a country mile ahead of everybody else when it comes to Europe um, so yeah I think bigger squads and the ability to back up games has an effect on you you know we just came off a nine week block we had a week off this week but like nine premiership games in a row Intense. I'll tell you now you just need to trust me it's it's mentally and physically taxing on sure. the body and on the mind so um, it's something that I would love to just give the Pro 14 one more go just to try and try and compare and then in terms of I know Pep Guardiola is a classic example where you're not dropped you're rotated do you say say if you find yourself starting maybe three or four prem games in a row and then you're on the bench do you yourself feel this is kind of rotation I'm not dropped or Kind of, how do you feel about kind of rotation all? Because it needs to happen in such a traditional league. Yeah, I think positionally it's important too. Like as a hooker, when you're at the coal face and you're in the nitty gritty, you do need rotated. I, I never like to be rotated because what you're doing is giving people opportunities. And the guys who I learned from at Ulster, like a Rory Best or a Neil, Nigel Brady, who was the hooker at the time, uh, Andy Kiriakou as well to some degree, like they never gave me a sniff because they knew if I got a sniff, then who knows what can happen after that. So rotation is difficult. But when you play in the Premiership, um, I can only speak about the Premiership, like you just acknowledge it has to happen. Because to be honest, by the time the coach goes, right, we're going to put you on the bench and give you 20 to 30 off here because we feel like you've gone to the well the last three or four weeks, you're probably subconsciously starting to think it. You're probably thinking like on a Monday or Tuesday, like I'm I'm still really sore from the game. You get to a Thursday and you're going like, F- I feel flat today. And I think the opportunity, the really good teams have the ability to just rotate that and yeah. give players opportunities. And then with that, you get squads that are all scrapping for places, which is a really positive place to be. Yeah, hmm. And then in terms of Worcester itself, do you every year go in thinking, right, Champions Cup qualification, is that is that always the aim? Or truthfully, is it stay in the stay in the premiership? Yeah. I'm like I said, I'm not on here to message about the state relegation is not something we discuss at the start of the year. And that is the honest truth because you cannot go in and set your sights on just surviving. Yeah. You never so it doesn't work. So my dream for Worcester is to get them champions cup rugby because i've played in the champions cup i've been involved in big champions cup games i know that there's like a there's a different feeling about um the place the challenge we have is that we're not in a place where we can prioritize the champions cup because it's chicken and egg we're always trying to make sure that we are doing well enough in the league to get the next thing whether it's uh, eighth place or getting off the off the bottom so there's a, it's a chicken and egg scenario but my my ambition has always been to, to bring big Heineken Cup games of rugby to six ways for Worcester because I feel like that would be the the spitball snowball scenario of where the club can actually go to. Mm. Yeah, and what's it like then f- playing with the likes of a Chris Ashton who's been there, done that for England, well seasoned professional? Like, what's it play- like? Because Worcester do have some. Big, some good players, some big names, even young players like of an Ollie Lawrence. Like, what's it like playing, playing with those, playing with those guys? I love it. Like, you know, every rugby squad is similar in a way and different in a completely different way too. I think the guys that we've got at Worcester, the one thing I can always say about what I, my experience of Worcester has been, is that we've got no, um, 
no idiots in the squad. We've got like a new dickhead policy. We have had we've had the ability to bring really good people together, and then off the back of that, you're hoping you can produce a good rugby team. What we've lacked is the consistency in our in our management um, over a period, which I believe we have now over a period of time that allowed us to keep that group together. Because with a new management group, it brings new players and new turnover, and new and there was years where we were losing twenty plus players, which is a really difficult thing in, in rugby. But to play with someone like Chris Ashton, for example, first of all, is class because he's like you said, he's been there and done it. He scored big tries. He's been in big moments in European rugby. Um, and an international rugby and you have to be able to milk every single ounce of experience that you want from that person so for someone like me who's fascinated in making teams better and trying trying to create an environment where we can go and win games of rugby he's been brilliant and then the other one you mentioned there ollie lawrence like it's interesting because i don't know how well known he is over uh, back home in, in northern ireland or ireland but i've worked with some pretty successful people and um, some people went, like Luke Marshall for example was as talented as anybody in my um, academy year that I came through with and if anyone listens to this you just need to trust me this kid Ollie Lawrence has the ability to, to, to do it all he is the real deal he will be touch wood he will be a multiple multiple Lions tour um, in the years to come I don't think he's going to make this one I'm not sure but you see like generational talents this kid is the real deal Wow, fair enough. Uh, to be honest, our third member of the pod, Harvey, isn't the uh, biggest fan of him. But um, personally, I was calling for him to. I'd love to know stuff. why. Um, I can't remember why. Tell, do you want to know why? Do you well, I, I actually had the argument with him when the game was on. He when Ollie Lawrence went off, he's like, "I haven't seen Ollie Lawrence again." And I'm like, "He doesn't get the ball the way kind of Eddie Jones plays. He, he can't flourish and." I, I thought he was a bit of a scapegoat in the Six Nations, and I am a big Ollie Lawrence fan as well. But Harvey just thought I haven't seen him do anything. I haven't seen him make a line break. So, uh, we'll, well just, I, I can I, I can, I can under, yeah, I can understand uh, Harvey's opinion off, off the back of maybe what he has seen. I would just think like go and watch any of the games that we play at Worcester when he plays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every like off first phase, you're talking about like are we in agreement that Premiership's a decent standard, right? Oh, for, for right. me, it genuinely is the right. best league in the world. Like before you said it, like 100% so, it is. So, so we're in agreement. It's a good standard. He's getting the ball off first phase and running over and running around. It's like seasoned internationals and premiership players. So um, he, he needs a template where he's able to do that. And um, I'm sure with time, England will have to start to develop their game around him. They have to because he's just, like I said, he's generational. Yeah, because mm. you've seen a bit of, was it Sir Clive was saying that he, he admitted that they hadn't actually seen him play much because he hadn't watched him for Worcester at all. But yeah, it was there to criticise him and saying that he's maybe not ready yet. And that yeah. the joke, the pundits at that level can't really. <laughs> it's, 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 it is it's it's a disgrace that he hasn't made the effort. He's been, like everybody needs to know, he's been paid to do that. You're being paid money to have an opinion on these players yeah, and yeah. this game of rugby. So do the due diligence to go and watch games where these people are involved because it's like me turning up to to commentate on a uh, a league a league game. You know, I did I did Bristol versus Worcester a couple of weeks ago, right? And I was on the co-coms and I even I did my my due diligence on people because you don't want to sound like an idiot. And unfortunately, yeah, that's 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 all he's done. He's made himself sound like an idiot. No, oh, definitely. And then kind of looking forward, you must be, it's another big fan of the big fan we are in the pod is Duhan van der Merwe coming, coming down. We, we call him the minibus here, just <laughs> how he runs. But um, people like that, you must be licking your lips, getting just excited for them to get on board because they're proper X Factor Lions quality players. Yeah, definitely. It's it's he is someone that um, when you hear the club signed him, you're like, there's a buzz around it. You know, the biggest compliment I've heard said about him is Cornell Dupree is obviously a Scottish international and pretty close with Duhan. Um, he plays with us at Worcester, and we had a guy here at Worcester called Bryce Heem not a couple of years ago. Bryce Heem was probably the most devastating winger I've played with. He was about six foot four, five Kiwi. Um, was was like 110 kilos, could run around people over people, could pat. Like he was the real deal. He ended up moving on to Toulon for big money, which we can't begrudge him. He's a good friend of mine. And I thought Bryce was like the finished article. Him and Josh Adams are probably sitting there as like the people I've played with who I think are the finished article. And Cornell Dupree reckons that Duhan's 
as good, if not better than Bryce. So if that, if he can live up to half of that, I think yeah. for Worcester, it's an amazing signing. It's a great piece of business by the club and the coaches. And hopefully he can take us to that next level. Because he's only, mm-hmm. he's only 25, 25, 26. So he's got plenty of rugby yeah. left in him. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully off the back of a Lions yeah, tour. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, potentially a, a Lions tour to show for it as well. I hope so. I hope so. I hope there's a. I hope he has the ability to go there and tear up and then bring whatever he's learned or the experiences that he's had and, and make us better in whatever way he can. Mm-hmm.